Hello everyone! Welcome to another Let's Play of King's Quest VI. My name is Anna Mardal. When we last left the game, we'd gotten the best possible good ending. And the game was nice enough to, to mention that there is another easier entrance into the castle. And it even tells you where to, where to get it, to restore to a point before the Druid's Rainstorm. I wanted also to talk about some of the differences in the game depending on your choices. They actually put a lot of thought into the fact that you could choose not to do some of the things that you did and that those choices should affect the ending. So here is a list of the variations for the ending. The first variation has to do with Alexander's ring. If Alexander retrieves his ring from the pawn shop by buying it back with the pearl, and if he sends it to Cosima via her nightingale Sing Sing, Cosima will have the ring at the wedding. That was the ending we got. If Alexander retrieves his ring but does not send it to Cosima, he'll have it at the wedding and put it on her finger. If Alexander leaves his ring in the pawn shop, there won't be a ring at the wedding. The second change is Alexander's relationship with Jolo. If Alexander befriends book Jolo in the bookstore, Jolo will be happy and joyful at the wedding. Otherwise, he'll look worried. Which, okay, that makes sense. Uh, he doesn't know who we are in that case. We're a total stranger. And, um... Uh, uh... I'm struggling for the right words. Um, he'll have some concerns about Cosima marrying someone he literally has never heard of before. The third big difference is the fate of the genie, Shamir. If Alexander is able to use the genie's lamp to become the new master of the genie, which is what we did by having Jalo steal the lamp, Alexander's family will be present at the wedding, and it will be noted that the genie has already repaired the ferry, and that reuniting the islands will be much easier now that the genie's powers are being used for good. If the genie is killed, which is the only other option you have to, to get through this ending, um, if you didn't get the lamp to give to Jalo, you have to give the genie a mint leaf in that ending, and he'll end up, um, I think his spell goes wild and kills himself or something, uh, so, so the genie dies. Uh, if the genie is killed, Alexander's family will not be present, because the genie couldn't have brought him them there, and Saladin will speak for Alexander at the wedding, instead of King Graham speaking for him. It will also be noted that the ferry will need to be repaired before the islands can be reunited, which is going to take several years probably because the, they obviously weren't master shipbuilders here. If Alexander brings King Caliphim, okay, so so that's that's the first three: Alexander's ring, Alexander's relationship with Jolo, the genie's fate. The fourth big difference in ending is the fate of King Caliphim and Queen Aloria. If Alexander brings King Caliphim and Queen Aloria back from the realm of the dead in the longer ending, like we did, they'll be present at the wedding and give Cosima away. If Alexander doesn't bring them back, Jalo will give Cosima away himself, and the wedding will be bittersweet. And the fifth major difference is the unrest between the islands. If Alexander discovers the treasure room in the castle basement and looks at all four treasures down there, it will be noted that the feuding between the islands has stopped and that the feuding was caused by the vizier stealing a sacred treasure from each island and having each island blame another to sow distrust among them. If Alexander becomes master of the genie, the rulers of the other islands will be at the wedding as well. If Alexander doesn't discover the treasure room and the treasures, it will be noted that the other islands are still feuding and you'll have to figure out the cause of the feuds. Even if Alexander becomes the genie's master, the rules of the other the rulers of the other islands won't be present because they're they're still upset. So those are the ending differences. Thank you for playing. Um Okay, that's I don't want to. 
If I'd known we were going to sit through a credit scene. Fine. I'm going to do some reading while the credits go on. There was one section that I didn't read before out of the, uh, the booklet. And that section is the Castle of the Crown. This is from the instruction booklet. The Castle of the Crown is a stunning palace, giving testimony to the skill of the kingdom's architects and the richness of its treasury. The castle is a monument of marble, gold, and precious gems with tall arched ceilings and artistic fittings. I am told that it was built 100 years ago by King Alifid as a present to his white bride, Queen Astar. The previous castle, also called the Castle of the Crown, was large and drafty, and had served as the seat of the royal family for over 300 years. It is said that King Alifid was cautious over his new bride's fragile health, and built the new palace with thick walls for protection from the high winds, and cool hallways for respite from the blazing tropical sun. The castle is made even more exotic by the race of guard dogs that serve and protect the palace. These wondrous creatures seem to combine the best qualities of canine and human. Speaking in gruff voices and armed with swords or pikes, the guard dogs are strong and intelligent and have loyally served the crown through the centuries. Despite my status as a stranger, I was granted a visit with the reigning king and queen. Their openness and accessibility, added to the lack of drawbridges, moats, or battlements of any kind, made clear to me the innocence of this kingdom that had never known war or treachery. Had I been a viper in disguise, I would have been granted an intimate audience just as readily. As a citizen of the larger, more dangerous world, it made me feel a little nervous and honor-bound not to betray such trust in me. I met the king and queen in the castle's throne room. The throne room is a vast hall more ornate than anything these poor eyes have ever seen. Standing before the two thrones in that cavern of gold, I felt as though I stood before fabled Olympus itself. Yet raising my eyes up slowly to those noble faces, I saw nothing of judgment in their eyes, nothing of disdain. Indeed, their faces were full of guileless welcome and kindness. As for the rulers of this kingdom themselves, King Caliphon, though not a large man, has an air of strength and a self-assurance about him. He has the face of a scholar and the eyes of a gentle benefactor, of Queen Alaria, his beautiful wife. My first impression was of hair the color of night and skin as pale as dawn. She smiled at me graciously, and I could see the sadness there, for the, despite the glory of the palace around them, the halls seemed to weigh on the couple with their emptiness. They are the last of the royal family, and growing into middle age have yet to produce an heir. The king and queen listened with interest to my tale of shipwreck. King Caliphon asked astute questions of my homeland and the lands of my travel. He seemed to know something of other lands, perhaps from the same source that had brought the name of the land of the Green Isles to Daventry. He was most curious, and as a thinker seemed intrigued by any new idea I might offer. Unfortunately for him, my ideas on such things as kingdoms and civilizations were rather simple ones. I sensed that, despite his interest, he would be content to have those other kingdoms remain remote for his own. Neither hungry for conquest nor anxious for change, his kingdom would remain isolated. Indeed, except for the lack of an heir, it seems the good king and queen did provide the kingdom all it could ever desire. Having met the royal cat couple and recovered sufficiently from my ordeal at sea, I began to feel quite curious about the other islands in the kingdom, and so I put my itching feet in the care of the jolly fairy man. So that is from the instruction booklet. So, okay. Thank you for playing King's Quest Six. Yes, yes. Good, wonderful. Don't you dare just sit through. There we go. Do 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 do. So we're going to restore what I had called choice. What a good girl you are. Yes, you are. Cookie is here to say hi to everyone. And we're gonna call this end game four. I don't think, I don't remember if we took the rose to close out the situation with Cassima, but we will try. Why are you so sad? Why are you so sad? It's not dinner time yet. Dinner isn't for another hour. 
So we can't go to the Druid Island, because if we do, we will get set on fire, and the fire will destroy Beauty's clothes. There's Sing Sing. So let's go ahead and give Sing Sing the rose we plucked. Here you go. Alexander holds out the rose, hoping the bird will deliver it to Cassima. I don't know that you get points for this. But it does close out the situation with Sing Sing because she doesn't come back. So, um, we will go back to town and we can still trade our lamp with the peddler and take this blue lamp. <laughs> it's gonna make it a noisy, scratchy sound in people's ears. Yeah, there are people inside that microphone. Yeah, tiny little people inside the microphone. And you must be very quiet because every sound you make is very, very loud to the tiny people because they're so small. No, you can't see the tiny people. No, they're very shy. They're very shy. Okay, making sure we got the right lamp. And we can also still... Uh, we're going to trade our tinder box instead of for a paintbrush for the nightingale. And we are going to now fake our own death. I can't go on anymore. genie bottle in King's Quest V, the Drink Me is one of those items, and for that matter, the Invisible Ink is one of those items that um, you really have to use your first time through to see what it does, and then restore a save so that you can use it properly. Which, depending on how you approach your uh, games, can be immersion breaking. in terms of um, how would I know to do this if it were not for the fact that in another in another universe I I, I did it just to uh, to test what it would do so Jalo is not there but that doesn't surprise me I think we've we've already spoken to him so now we are going to try the easier quote unquote I won't even call it easier. I'll call it shorter. The shorter ending. They call it easier, but they put it in quotes, which I hope indicates that they understand that it's not easier. A group of serving women approach the castle. More serving women. The castle staff is certainly busy today. Those serving wenches are always late. And we are going to put on Belle's clothes. Beauty's clothes. 
Here we go. You there, girl, get in there. I think it's terribly short-sighted that... Alexander doesn't keep the disguise, but I guess he feels like he knows what he's doing. Okay, now this is tricky because I actually don't know what I'm doing. It's been a while. Can we go downstairs? The door is locked. If we go up here, you cannot uh, get past the guards because they're walking in an alternating pattern, which is the best way to prevent people from sneaking by. It's these guards here that are walking in a together pattern in order to talk, which is probably against the rules. And we've already seen their spoken dialogue, although that was in another video, so I probably should have um, played it for you, but I wasn't thinking. We're gonna let them come back this way. And then very quickly go into this little alcove here. They must have turned at the end of the hallway and on their way back towards the stairs. Okay. Alexander's, the guards passed the pillar and Alexander sighs in relief. They didn't see him. The guards turn around at the staircase and head back. That was a close one. Alexander takes a closer look at, look at the portrait on the wall. Kindly smiles light up the faces of the couple in the painting. The man has an intelligent, sensitive look about him, and the woman is quite lovely. <laughs> I love how every freaking description of Califim and Alaria is about the king's brain and personality. He looks kind and intelligent, and it's about the queen's looks. She's hot. Because that's definitely what's important. Alexander guesses that the man and woman in the painting are none other than King Califim and Queen Alaria, Cosima's parents. Um, we've got her nightingale, and the guards were looking for it. Alexander will have to walk out in the main hall if he wants to do something there. Crap, I'm not sure what to do here exactly. And there they go. Okay, so there's a short period of time Alexander winds the metal nightingale and places it in the hallway. Hurry, hurry. The mechanical song echoes in the corridor. Alexander hears the sound of boots pounding as the guards come to investigate. Alexander ducks behind the pillow. Pillar. <laughs> pillow? Look at this, wolf. A metal bird. Sure is, bae. How do you suppose a metal bird got in here? You got me, but there's something weird about it. Could this be Cosima's nightingale, do you think? What? You lapdog! Princess's nightgale isn't some tin thing. How do you know? Have you seen it? Well, no, but... I don't know, Bay. Humans can be pretty strange. With their sense of smell, maybe she wouldn't even know it wasn't real. I say we take it downstairs to Captain Salad. He'll know what to do with it. What about our post? Jowls and Mitre in the other hallway. They can handle it for five minutes. Think how happy the princess would be to get her nightingale back. And then there's the reward money and my missus. Alright, Wolf, let's go. Alexander hears the guard dog's boots clank noisily on the staircase leading down to the Grand Hall. Got them out of the way. So now... 
Alexander finds the hallway door unlocked and slips inside. Okay. Alexander opens the ebony box. Alexander can read the piece of paper, Zebu. We need the, well, there's no skeleton key. The trunk is locked. I don't suppose the scythe could do anything with it. Using that on the trunk will serve no purpose. Um, hmm. That will not serve as proof of treachery if we need that. The wardrobe is full of black cloaks and a rather sour smell. Alexander examines the clothes but finds something of interest. Okay. Alexander hears muffled crying coming from the door. The door is locked from the inside. There must be somebody in there. Hello? Anyone in there? A voice from behind the door responds. Go away! I said I didn't want to be disturbed! Stupid dogs! What? That can't be Cosima. Can we slip our knife under the door? There's no point in using that on the door. Mm. Okay, no, I'm doing it wrong. Luckily, we saved a lot. We need to move this. Alexander checks behind the portrait. There is a nail on the wall. Now we go into Ahasuerus' room and open the box and look at Zebu. And we use the nail to pick the lock on the chest. Alexander wiggles the nail in the trunk's lock until he hears a click. Alexander opens the trunk. Alexander picks up the most recent letter and reads it. So that is the letter that we need. Now we're going to save our game again, and I believe I did, I, w I went to the wrong door. Alexander hears muffled sound crying coming from the back hallway. It, this one is, uh, I, I, I think it's the room al is writing in. Go away, I said I didn't want to be disturbed. Stupid dogs. <laughs> so fortunately he didn't recognize our voice. There we go, walk, thank you. The crying is louder here. It seems to be coming from the doorway on the north wall. The door is locked with a heavy padlock. Hello, is someone there? Who, who's there? Kasima, is that you? It's Alexander. Alexander, is it really you? When Sing Sing brought me your ring, I could scarcely believe it. How did you get inside the castle? 
Never mind that now, princess. It isn't important. What can I do to help you? Do you want me to get you out of here? There's a padlock on the door, I think. No, please, don't even think about that. There are guards everywhere, and the vizier would have you killed if he found you. You shouldn't even risk being outside my door. Please go away now, Alexander. But what about you? I can't just leave you locked up like this. The only way out for me is to stop the vizier. See what you can do out there. In the meantime, I should be safe enough. He hasn't harmed me yet. If I can only get my hands on something to defend myself with, I'm pretty sure I'll get a chance to use it. The vizier feels safe around me. No one else can get that close. You're so brave, princess, but it's so too dangerous. Have you forgotten where we met? What Abdul is compared to Mordak? I'll be fine. Now go. I misread the line. What is Abdul compared to Mordak? I'll be fine. Now go. I like that, actually. That's a really good line. And I'm upset that I flubbed it. <laughs> but, um, we did. We, we, we met Kasima in, in, she had been kidnapped by a guy who was demanding that she marry him. And determined to force her into humiliating servitude until she did marry him. And she refused. She, she bore bravely and with great courage and strength under a very difficult situation that would have been one with a lot of fear and isolation. I mean, the King's Quest V castle, Mordai's castle, that place gave me the heebie-jeebies. I can't even imagine being a captive there uh, and feeling like the only way you could make your life even a little bit better would be to ingratiate yourself with this captor who is otherwise going to, to kill you or hurt you or you don't even know. Um, so this game doesn't really show you much of her strength, but Kasima has been through fire and uh, she's a very strong young woman. So I really like that line. I wish that had been included in the longer ending actually. Have you forgotten where we met? What is Abdul compared to Mordak? I'll be fine, now go. I'll do as you say. I will find some way to help you, Kasima. I swear it. I believe you, Alexander. Please be careful. I don't know if we can show her the letter. I found this letter in the vizier's bedroom. I, I think you should know what it says. <gasps> I can't believe it. I had my suspicions, but this confirms everything. Alexander, you must take the letter. You might have a chance to show it to someone who can help you stop the vizier. And we will give her the knife. Kasima, take this small dagger. It's not much, but perhaps it will prove useful to you. Thank you, Alexander. I'm sure it will help. Whew. Okay. So... We have to go back to this hallway. And the guards will be back soon. So we need to very quickly put the nail back on the wall. Put the portrait back on the wall. And hide behind the pillar. If you didn't have the brain of a cat wolf, you'd have known that mechanical nightingale wasn't Cosima's nightingale. Me? I was all for staying on patrol, but you wanted to show the thing to Saladin. Well, at least the captain wasn't too bad. Mad. He's a good, honest dog, Saladin is. I wish the same could be said of. Hush! Do you want to be dazzled, you fool? Somewhere nearby, a door opens. Greetings, Shamir, sir. A petulant voice snaps a response at the guards. The wedding is about to begin. Make sure everything's secure. Yes, sir. Footsteps retreat down the hall, back towards the back hallway. Alexander hears the distant sound of chains rattling. A door opens. There's a small commotion and a woman's sharp cry. Kasima. Gradually, the sounds fade away off to the east. All is silent. Here now, if I wasn't, if it weren't for him being the vizier's page and all, I'd have something to say about that. Wonder where he's taken her. The wedding's the other way. You never know with that one. He's always showing up when he should be and going where he oughtn't. Let's go check it out. 
I do like that the guards are actually trying to do their best in a difficult situation. The guard dog seemed to have stopped at the back hallway. From downstairs, Alexander hears the first wafting strains of music. It's beautiful music. It's wedding music! Alexander looks cautiously around the grand hall, but there are no guard dogs to be seen. The wedding music is coming from behind those two large doors. So there is no chance to go downstairs and give the bottle to Jalo. Prince Alexander, here, the vizier will have my head for allowing you within a mile of the royal wedding. Since you are of noble birth, I will give you five seconds to explain your presence here before killing you. I warn you, it had better be good. There's one more thing you can do that I forgot to do. You can show him Kasima's letter to you. Wait, I'm a friend of Kasima's. I have a note to prove it. Vizier Alhazaraz said you were a danger to the princess. Even if she believes you to be a friend, I have no reason to doubt that the vizier is right about you. So that doesn't do much good, but we do have the vizier's letter. Ugh. Hello, Cookie. Wait, if you love your princess, you'll hear me out. The vizier is not what he appears to be. Kasima is in terrible danger. I have proof that this is so. For your princess's sake, you must believe me. Let me see that. We've already seen this part. Saladin is angry, but he has doubts because he's seen Kasima with Alhazred. Well, he hasn't actually seen Kasima with Alhazred. He's seen the genie pretending to be Kasima. But it was wise of Alhazred to have those uh, moments for the guards to oversee, so that they would think that Kasima was in love with him. So we run up to stop Kasima. And she orders our death. The, her parents cannot rush up and save us because we haven't saved them from the underworld. But we do have the beast's mirror, which shows truth. Look into this mirror, my love, and show us your true heart. Ah! That mirror! No! The lovely image of Kasima suddenly bursts into smoke and is replaced by the vizier's genie. Shamir, you fool! It is not my fault, master. The illusion was broken. Treason! What have you done with the princess? Thank you, Cookie. <laughs> Cookie, this is kind of an important part of the gig. Come here. All right. Come here. Yes, I love you, everyone. Yes, the tiny people love you too. And mommy loves you. Mm-hmm. Mommy loves you so much. What a good girl you are. Can I play this game and finish it out and then I'll give you some food? I love on you and I'll get some food. Enraged, Saladin and the other guard dogs begin advancing on the vizier. Do something, you worthless genie! So, we're gonna follow him. Quickly. Uh-oh. Did we, did we break the game? There we go. Oh, we almost crashed. In fact, just to be really, really, really safe, let's save the game. Yes, we are. We're gonna save the game. What a pretty purr you have. What a pretty purr. There we go. Alexander, be careful! A Hazarod has a sword! Here I am, Master! How could you let him follow me? We don't have the bottle because we didn't have a chance to give it to Jalo, but we have this mint. 
Look what I hear, have here, my friend. Peppermint. Nice, fresh peppermint. Razzle, dazzle, mmm. Forget about the stupid peppermint. Don't you dare even think about it. Mint! Oh no, not now. <laughs> Do something, Shamir. Kill him. Send a small, I mean a ball of light to Frazzle. The dazzle ball goes wild. Uh-oh. And he, he killed himself. You killed my genie. Do you not know how valuable he was? You fool. I'll kill you for that outrage. Really? For that? Not for everything else? All right, we've already done this part, so now we just kind of get to sit back and watch. Yeah. I like that too, the casino freezer stuff. And it helps. I would definitely stab this guy in the back. Alexander's arms start to tremble under the effort of wielding the huge sword. He is nearing exhaustion. And for some reason, we incapacitated him rather than just killing him outright. I mean, sanctity of life and all that, but honestly, just kill him. I'm fine, Alexander. I was so worried for you. for a good love story ending. <laughs> All right. So she throws him in the dungeon. And now we get the abbreviated ending, so to speak. Kasima and Alexander ask Captain Saladin to perform their wedding ceremony. Saladin is honored to do so. On this historical day of great joy in the land of the Green Isles, we witness the union of Kasima, beloved princess of this realm, and Alexander, prince of Daventry. Do you, Prince Alexander of Daventry, take the princess Kasima to be your wife, to love and cherish for as long as you both shall live? I do. And do you, Princess Cosima of the Land of the Green Isles, take Alexander to be your husband, to love and to cherish, for as long as you both shall live? I do. Do you have a ring? I have Alexander's royal insignia ring. Very good. Please place the ring on Cosima's finger. Who gives this bride to be wed? That would be me. In the name of King Calvin, beloved friend, I give his daughter Cosima in wedlock. Thank you, Jalo. Since the groom has no family present, I will speak on his behalf. Alexander, your union with this woman is sanctioned and recognized in the eyes of the community. Thank you, Saladin. Per Alexander and Kasima, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. So all we have here is our two guards and Jalo. Excuse my interrupting your joy, but I have an important question for the new bride and groom. What is it, Saladin? Alexander, Alhazarod hurt this little kingdom, nearly to the point of destroying all that we stand for. But you are true and good, and have proven yourself to all the people. Thank you, Captain. King Califim and Queen Alaria are gone and can never be restored. Alhazarod has, thankfully, been banished. But we are leaderless. I believe you two can heal this small kingdom from all the damage that Alhazarod has inflicted upon it. Banished? We let him go? So he can just go prey on some other kingdom and become vizier there? He's dangerous. He has a society of black cloak friends. 
Will you two, Alexander and Cosima, consider becoming the ruling king and queen? Well, yes, obviously. I love my homeland, Alexander. I would be happy to stay and serve it all my days. I wish my father were here so that I could ask his advice. I will miss him and my mother and sister and Daventry. But I love you, Cosima, and I do feel at home here. Somehow this land and I seem to suit each other. I don't know what kind of king I'll make, but I accept. Oh, Alexander, I am so happy. If only my parents could have been alive to see this day, my joy would be complete. I'm sorry I could not spare you that grief, beloved. King Alexander, there is a long road ahead. The ferry must be repaired before it can reunite the islands. Unfortunately, the islands are still feuding. It will take time and great diplomacy to convince them to reunite and stop fighting each other. Yes, Alexander. We will have to try to discover how Alhazred managed to make them hate each other so that we can undo what he has done. Now let us celebrate our good fortune. The evil that has plagued this land is done and a new reign begins. Long live King Alexander and Queen Cosima. Yay! So that is the abbreviated shortened ending. We aren't able to discover the treasures in the basement because we're never able to go to the basement. Um, 176 out of 231 points. We hope you'll play again. <laughs> um, and we'll probably have to watch through the credits again in order to just, yeah. So, um, King's Quest VI was actually the second King's Quest game I played. I did play King's Quest V first. And, um... Because I hadn't played 1 through 4, which have a lot of fantastical elements in it, um, King's Quest V is actually pretty down to earth in terms of the series. You don't go to the underworld, you don't go to the land of dreams, you don't uh, bring anyone back from the dead in King's Quest V. Um, so when I played King's Quest VI, and this was the ending that I got the first time because the the uh, making the teapot spell work was very hard for me because I didn't realize you could substitute the lamp for a teapot. I'm, I'm American. Um, a, the closest I ever got to a teapot was um, the Beauty and the Beast teapot, Mrs. Potts. To, to me as a Texan, tea is a thing that comes served in a plastic pitcher with ice and lots of sugar, iced tea. Um, so it never ever in a million years would have occurred to me to exchange um, the what looked like an Aladdin genie lamp for a teapot. I, so I could not ever figure out how to get past the druid setting you on fire. I mean, obviously you were supposed to do something there. You get an end game if you don't have anything and it says, you know, you screwed up, but I couldn't figure it out. But I could get this ending. Um, and since I had only played King's Quest V, and since King's Quest V is pretty down to earth for the series, uh, I actually thought this ending was more realistic than the, um, than the longer, better ending. When I got first got the longer, better ending, I didn't quite know how to feel about that because, I mean, it's grand that you've reunited the islands and everyone's there at your wedding. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, you bring her parents back from the dead. That's a lot. <laughs> um, and it's... Uh, definitely very fantastical. I, I mean, just imagine, how do you even talk about that? You know, oh, Bob, have you heard the news from the palace? No, what is it, darling? Oh, well, remember the king and queen who died? They're back. Yeah, yeah, the uh, princess has a boyfriend that she met, and he actually traveled to the underworld and brought the king and queen back. I mean, wow, that's a, that's a, that's a lot. That's a lot, is what it is. <laughs> Um, so, so when I first got this ending, I was like, well, that's really happy and sweet and all, but, but is it realistic? I don't know. Well, of course, now I've played the other King's Quest games since then, or several others, and, uh, you know, bringing people back from the dead and visiting, um, surreal alternate dimensions is, you know, pretty standard <laughs> practice, um, for, for, you know, in, in, in King's Quest 7, 
Uh, first, we, we take an extra life from a cat, still not sure how that works, and give it to Edgar when he dies um, to bring him back to life. And meanwhile, our mom travels to the land of Dreamworld like twice, or if you mess up and forget to do the, the crystal properly, in my case, three times. Um, and you know, and you're, and you're saving fairies who are basically Greek gods. So <laughs> at that point, it was like, oh, okay, I misunderstood the tone of the series. You're supposed to be able to do things like go to the land of the underworld and save people from death. And so then it was fine, and I had no problem with it. Um, and I do really like the underworld just because the lord of the dead is just so emotional for me. I really wish we could help him in some way, but that is beyond our ability to do. Um, his fate is a fate that, um, mere mortals cannot interfere with. But so that is King's Quest VI. Uh, again, a, a direct sequel from King's Quest V. You, uh, go on to save... Okay, the music can stop now. You go on to save Princess Cosima. Well, you're gonna meet her, and you end up saving her. And, um, as a game, I think it holds up really well. You've, you've got the, you've got text for accessibility. Thank you. Um, the graphics are still in my opinion, attractive to look at. They're dated, yes, but it's not, in my opinion, ugly. Um, you have the fact that the puzzles are, for the most part, things that you can figure out through trial and error. Um, the teapot thing is hard. But other than that, uh, I, I remember even as a kid being able to puzzle my way through most of the things. Even the, the, the wordplay puzzles, like the doors puzzle where you have to figure out that the meaning is love. You do get a, a sort of a hint of, a, of that earlier. So that was nice with the, the spider's web. I also like the fact that it does give some more backstory in the sense of Cosima's captivity. We find out that Mordak kidnapping her was not just a random tragedy. It was actually arranged by the vizier who is now trying to forcibly marry her. He's been basically trying to get her out of the way so he can take over. He, he can't have been happy that she came back because he killed her parents while she was gone and was presumably running the kingdom. And, uh, and that was also probably why he had the islands feuding with each other because none of them could say, well, look, if we have no royal family anymore and we're going to have to reinvent a royal family from scratch, why should it be you, vizier dude? Why can't, you know, maybe we elect somebody? Hey, we've got Lady Celeste. Now she's the new king or, you know, queen or something like that. So he had the islands feuding so that he could kill the king and queen and take over without anybody uh, raising an objection. So with the princess coming back, in many ways that had to be like, dang it, I thought I already took care of this. Um, but an opportunity in that, okay, as long as he keeps her sequestered, he can marry her and then arrange another accident and now he's king officially. So so it was, it was probably frustrating but also an opportunity at the same time for him. Um, but from a story perspective, I like that we got more of that backstory as to why she was... Uh, why she was kidnapped. It wasn't just random bad chance on her, uh, you know, bad luck for her. It was actually arranged to get her out of the way. What I don't like is the really rampant Orientalism. You, you've you got, uh, uh, it's especially obvious with once we get inside the palace and you see all the, the decor choices, which are very... Uh, Arabian-esque and Orientalism tropes. Um, the genie says, uh, by Bala instead of Allah. Uh, you know, so they even have their own fictional version of Allah, which seems really... I don't, I don't even know. It seems not good. Um, it, it's kind of a mess. 
and uh, I don't really think it's a respectful mess. I think uh, Sierra was trying to just take things that they thought would make for a good flavor for for uh, for making this place seem delicate and, and pretty and, and, and cultured as opposed to uh, the, the, the meaty, earthy, rough, hewn, down-to-earth masculinity of the European Western uh, castle aesthetics that we already had with Daventry. And you even have that in the, um, you have the, 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 the booklet the introduction booklet that talks about how this place is such an innocent place and such a childlike place and 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 a place full of magic and wonder where you know they have no concept of guile or villainy and and they're so innocent and sweet a viper could crawl into the the castle and request an audience with the king and queen and and they would graciously grant it to them not knowing the danger and and you know it's just just <laughs> uh, so Sierra had a lot of issues with uh, Orientalism and and racism and, and you know and honestly and this is kind of the most frustrating thing they probably thought that this was that this was good that this was allyship they were they were you know introducing children and, and, and young adults to another culture and, and they were treating it as a good thing and not like a, a dangerous, scary thing and, and it's an innocent place and not a, a warlike place. They probably thought this was helping and it's just... But it's still this thoughtless, careless uh, cultural appropriation that did... did frustrates me in retrospect because it's not like I can go around recommending this game as the best game ever because there's so much that it's like except for the part where <laughs> like for instance one of the characters is a character taken out of HP Lovecraft um that's not a problem so you know it's, it's got some good points it's got some bad points I, on a on a personal enjoyment level i personally enjoy this game very very much if i had any other criticisms of it and i'm not even sure if this is a criticism so much as because it's got it's a strength and a weakness but um you really can't like focus on one island and do that island and then do the next island and then do the next island. You've got to bounce around back and forth through all the islands. It's like you go to the Isle of Beast and you get the little curly dangling partic participle. You go to the island of uh, Sacred Mountain and you get the stinky flower and the feather. You go to the Island of Wonder and you use the stinky flower to get past the uh, the gnome guards, you know, you you have to start, and then you go to the island of the druids and pick up coal and a scythe, and then you leave right away, and then you come back later. You can't really go to an island and just focus on that island. You have to bounce, 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 bounce. In some ways, that's really cool because it's definitely an unusual type of play. It's it's different from like the the modern Bioware. Uh, uh, style of play where it's like, okay, now the game has opened up into four different areas. You can take them in any order, but you have to start there and finish the whole area and then go on to the next one, you know. So so in, in that sense, it's actually kind of cool and refreshing and neat to have a game that expects you and in fact demands that you bounce around like you are have just drunk a whole bunch of caffeine and you need to see everything right now. <laughs> um, in terms of knowing what you should do next, less helpful because, you know, as you saw, we ran into the thing where the dangling part of Sybil wouldn't show up. Well, because we didn't notice the rare book on the, uh, or the magic spell book on the bookstore counter. And then the teacup randomly shows up in the garden after we realize we need a teacup because we have a spell book. You know, stuff like that. It's like stuff just appears after you've done certain triggers to make it appear. And if you don't know that it's there, it can be very hard to know to go backtrack and get it. Um, so that's 
then that's kind of a mark, maybe not so much in the game's favor in terms of uh, replayability and, or at least playability in the first place. Um, so how would I review this game? I have no idea. I like it. I love it. I, I like the story a lot. Uh, I, uh, it's, it's probably, I know I said King's Quest V was my favorite King's Quest game, but this one kind of is my favorite King's Quest game too. But I also don't really see them as separate games. King's Quest V and King's Quest VI to me are so, um, similar in in terms of the look and the feel and uh the the aesthetics of the 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 game art and then of course the story flows from one to the other that to me they're almost like part one and part two of the same story it's funny to me actually they both have the same splash screen that's the identical it's the daventry coat of arms the 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 k with the circle and the crown and then the unicorn and the lion um, we actually did see the K circle and crown in King's Quest Seven. It, it took up a spot of the of the dashboard down here, and it didn't do anything, so it was just decorative. But it tied it in with the series. But so King's Quest Five and Six have the same splash screen, and um, in that sense, it also helped to me tie it together as them basically being two parts of a single game. So I guess they're both my favorite King's Quest game together. Um, that is King's Quest VI. That's all of it. There's no more. There's nothing else to see. And um, I have some thoughts about continuing the King's Quest playlist that I'm doing. But those will have to come in another video. Because I have to go figure some stuff out. And of course I have to see if my computer can even run certain things. So we'll have to see. Um, in the meantime, this has been King's Quest VI. My name is Anna Mardal. And I am just so ridiculously grateful uh, for all of you for coming along with me through this. Um, I really appreciate it. I know I'm not, uh, I, I fumble words when I read the, the booklets and, and I'm, I'm not a perfect Let's Player. I, there's, I know there's Let's Players that can read things perfectly and never mess up. And it's like, how? How do you do that? Um, I'm not one of, those, one of those perfect readers, but I really appreciate having you guys here with me through these, these videos. It, it makes me happy, like really happy. So thank you. Um, Subscribe if you want to, and if you're not already subscribed, it's really cool because you get an email notification saying every time I've uploaded a video, so you don't have to remember to check. Your email tells you. Um, and I'll see you in the next video, I guess. Bye-bye. <laughs>